Hi, I'm Donna from XOXO. In this quick and comprehensive tutorial, we'll be making flying geese blocks using the stitch and flip method and the four to time flying technique, along with useful tips from sewing to trimming these notoriously wonky blocks. I'll be using the This Way Home Quilt pattern, which you can find at XOXO.com. Let's dive into it. The stitch and flip method requires two squares and a rectangle. Mark a diagonal line on the wrong side of both squares. On a side note, if you're working with fabrics where the direction of the print may matter, such as stripes, do a little preview to see which direction you'd like your prints to go before making your diagonal line. Alright, back to our solid fabrics. Place one of the squares on one side of the rectangle, right sides together. Next, slowly sew just outside the mark line. Sewing just outside accounts for the fabric that's lost when the seam is pressed. Now cut a quarter inch away from the seam. Discard or save these scraps for another project. Press the seam open or outward. Repeat the same with the other square, this time placing it on the other side of the rectangle, then slowly sewing just outside the mark line. Let the machine do the work and avoid tugging your fabric while you sew your pieces together. Cut a quarter inch away from the seam and press to complete your flying geese block. If your block needs additional trimming, stay tuned for trimming tips. While the stitch and flip method is great for directional fabrics and scraps, the four at a time method on the other hand is sufficient and eliminates those triangle leftovers. To start, you'll need a large square and four smaller squares. Mark a diagonal line on the wrong side with the smaller squares. Place two of them on top of the larger squares, right sides together, so that the marked lines continuously run from one end to the other. Use pins to keep your pieces together. Then carefully sew a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides of the diagonal line. Cut along the diagonal line and press your seams open or outward. Next, place each remaining square on the half done pieces right sides together with a diagonal line running along here. And sew a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides of the line. Then cut along the marked line and press your seams open or outward to complete four flying geese blocks. Now I find that the four at a time method has the tendency to yield wonky blocks, so if you're working with a this way home pattern, the starting squares are larger than usual, allowing you to trim your blocks properly. Okay, let's trim these flying geese. I don't know if the following technique already exists, but it's what I do. This way you can trim any size flying geese block. I'm working on a block that needs to be trimmed to eight and a half inches by four and a half inches. First, we need to find the center. Use that pointy top to fold your block in half making sure to align the diagonal seams. You don't want to fold it like this or this or your block is gonna get wonkier. Once it's lined up, finger press or use an iron to create a center crease. Next, set the edge of your ruler a quarter inch above that pointy top, making sure to line up your ruler to that center crease. The crease acts as a guide to help your ruler position properly so you don't end up trimming it incorrectly. Let's trim that top. Rotate the fabric 180 degrees to the desired flying geese height, minus four and a half inches, and trim. Now it's time to trim the sides. Since my block will be eight and a half inches long, I need to divide that number in half to find the center measurement. So that's four and a quarter inches for me. So I'll measure four and a quarter inches on my ruler, lining it up along that center crease to trim this side. Rotate your fabric 180 degrees and repeat the step to trim the remaining side. Notice that the 45 degree angle of my flying geese seam matches the 45 degree of my cutting mat. That means we made a proper flying geese block. And we're done! I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more videos and helpful sewing tips. Thanks for watching!